Transmitting to you from Old Heart Radio. Crisp, loud, and in charge. <laughs> are we are we rolling? Yeah. Oh shit. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Welcome to Matt Nate Edition. Folks. This is Matt Nate Edition. Uh before we start, uh when this is <laughs> when this is uh released uh in roughly a week, uh, everybody say a prayer for my car currently stranded in downtown Olympia. Uh served me well. <laughs> <laughs> my poor girlfriend's driving down from Tacoma you'll, to come and get me. You'll pick it up and, uh, well, you'll get there tomorrow and it'll be like, it'll be a classic situation. Like on the tires will be gone. And oh, be like, fuck. No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. more Olympia. I'm just joking. It's, it's not a bike. Don't worry. It's safe. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bike. It's not a very uh, yeah. overtly no, nice looking car either. There's not a lot, of, not a lot of great car thieves. I can't think of like, uh, you know, there's no gone in 60 seconds Nicolas Cage no. uh, in Olympia, but there are bike thieves like that, man. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I mean, like, have you ever seen there's that video of the dudes robbing, uh, like, an Audi that has, like, completely, like, wireless doors? Oh, shit. And they, uh, w- one of them has, like, a tablet, and he's managed to, like, get into the system, and he's just opening the doors, That's and fun. they're just taking everything out of it. That's fucked. I know. It's crazy. That's fucking wild, man. Like that's like that that is like a nightmare situation for myself though where it's like you know, like that that's why I don't want I don't want uh, the scream trailer we watched last week yeah. kind of played on oh, it where it was like where it was yeah. like, you know, it's like it's like, "Oh my god, what if this person knows how to hack like my alarm system? What if this person yeah, knows yeah. how to hack They're my unlocking fucking the doors. car? Like everything's accessed, you know." You know, yeah. Oh man. Oh, it's frightening. And meanwhile, uh speaking of cars, like the we- movie the movie no <laughs> yeah uh, that's right you came here absolutely. you came here for marvel news you, you get left with cars news yeah <laughs> so um speaking of speaking of cars and the gaming minute Ooh. hey with it hey you got uh, it <laughs> on uh on this device that has your fingerprint saved on it yeah. so you can open it speaking of speaking dubious <laughs> i mean it's the same thing with my phone like looking at my phone just now you know and it opens no. up i i've you know, always I been th- weirded by it but facial, it's also like facial scan is a lot more secure the We're only not living in the mission impossible universe here yeah i was gonna say as long as uh the reality of face off doesn't become a thing you know <laughs> <laughs> we'll be all right there so um I was trying to for, for the, the gaming minute today i have sort of an interesting thing and it will segue us into greater conversations beyond the gaming minute oh. um but uh, Forza Horizon 5 just came out. Are yeah. you familiar with Forza at all? Uh, loosely. Uh, Same vein as like Gran Turismo. Yeah. You're a, play- you're a PlayStation guy. Yeah. Car driving. Car driving. And so racing. Forza. But more, is it more like a realistic racing game? Yes, like sim racing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the initial Forza franchise was well known for like very accurately simulated versions of tracks. Okay. And yeah. like racing, like proper racing style. Okay. Forza Horizon came around in 2012. And they took the simulator-esque gameplay and they put it on open world. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah. And um, since then, Forza Horizon has sort of like usurped Forza as like the thing people are hyped for. Okay. It's made by a different developer, but they share the car assets. And um, so Playground Games has been making Forza. This is Forza Horizon 5. And it brings up an interesting conversation about reviews and criticism of games. Mm-hmm. Because this is a racing game. And this is like an eight minute long video. I was thinking it's perfect for us to talk over while we sort of get the lay of it. Keep in mind, this game is the first Microsoft game that is exclusively being made for next gen consoles. So oh, okay. f- so Playground Games and the Forza like turn ten team, they are a Microsoft owned company. Forza yeah. is always it's a first it's a it's a console exclusive. It's always been like used as like a means of like showing off new consoles. Interesting. Okay. And so this is like the first game Microsoft has made that is exclusively releasing on new stuff. Interesting. To be followed very soon by Halo Infinite in like a month. Damn. So um, let, let's watch it. It's, yeah. it's we, can, we can talk over this. It's not very like in-depth. There's no story or anything. Fair enough. Just cars. Just cars. It's just some cars. Yeah. Not, not Owen Wilson. 
Not Owen Wilson. All right. Wow. Wow. Look at that Bronco. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. This actually leads me into a great uh, side conversation. Really? So there is some recent Fast and Furious announcement news. My God. Hit us with it during Forza. Yeah, I was going to. It's very fitting. That's sick drops. Sick drops. Big drops. Uh, so Vin Diesel recently made a post yeah. that I'm going to read right now. It says, Look at this, though. Look at this shit. Oh. I am intrigued here. So uh, taking place in Mexico, this game. The Grand Caldera Volcano and the Ring of Fire. So it's sort of like, and also important concept, the Horizon part, it's a car show slash music festival okay. that like travels. So it's like a, it's like a, like you're at the music festival type thing, driving a bunch of cars this is sort of the setup. Gotcha. Vin Diesel News. Oh man, this is kind of cool. Like I, I like, I, I like the look so far, you know? Um, <laughs> the graphics were made by taking photos of actual objects, giving it to an AI and letting it map everything. That's fucking insane. Oh shit. We'll jump. Yeah. Man, this might be reminding me why I forgot I kind of like racing games. Racing games are like, a blast, man. <laughs> when I was younger, my parents didn't let me play like first person shooters until yeah. I was like, I, like right before a teenager. Okay, racing yeah, games yeah. were my bread and butter. Like, I grew up with like Need for Speed Underground. Okay, yeah. Like, that was my shit. I mean, like, I would say, yeah, I remember like. God, what was one of the first racing games that came out for Xbox? It was like Gotham something or other. It was like some Gotham weird... City Racing. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I was really, I got really heavy into that game when it came out. And for some reason, I mean, I think it always stems back to like things like Mario fucking Kart and yeah. like Diddy Kong Marcus racing Classic. and stuff like that, where you're like, you, you know, you just get hooked on like that, the yeah. activity of going. But this, I mean, obviously is like a whole different level where it's like really, you have these really awesome, real, realistic fucking. Nope, we got like tracks and races. And Fuck off, Falcon oh, Winter Soldier. Sam Wilson as Captain America. So here we're anyway. moving on to the next one. That's the Bronco. Now in a different part of the map, Corvette. Oh. So, yeah, yeah. So, like I said, this this reminds me of, like, a bit of a Fast and Furious thing because there's cars dropping from planes, um, which does look cool. It looks fun. And looks there's fun. dynamic weather. There's a sandstorm in the distance. Yeah, you see that bad boy up there. Go for it. Uh, but he made this, like, post, and it was, like, directed at... The Rock. Fuck. So it, goes, it says, My little brother Dwayne, <laughs> the time has come. The world awaits the finale of Fast 10. As you know, my children refer to you as Uncle Dwayne in my house. There is not a holiday that goes by that they and you don't send well wishes, but the time has come. Legacy awaits. I told you years ago that I was going to fulfill my <laughs> promise to Pablo. I swore that we would reach and manifest the best Fast in the finale that is 10. I say this out of love, but you must show up. Do not leave the franchise idol. You have a very important role to play. Hobbs like can't be played by no other. I hope that you rise to the occasion and fulfill your destiny. That's biblical. It's fucking like apocalyptic. It's like, <laughs> it's like nobody, and I say this sincerely, nobody cares yeah. as much about Fast and Furious as Vin, Vin Diesel. Diesel. Like, Even Tyrese Gibson's getting other work. Dude, I'm Moby. saying... <laughs> not that that's Morbius. much work, man. God damn. Uh, but those, like, legit, though. Like, like it's so interesting. Like Cor Corvette's gone. We're heading into the jungle. I just can't believe he caught and tried to, like, make that a thing. Uh, it's very you know? public. It's very public. It, well, I mean, but The Rock kind of had through yeah. some shots recently, which I was... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I loved. I thought it was fucking hilarious. So now we got a, we got a Porsche landing in the jungle. Yeah. Thunder in the jungle, I think. Yeah, that's it. Thunder. It's uh, This is the fun thing with Horizon. They got rally stuff. And this is sort of... We can get into the subject yeah, yeah. matter I was going for here. So, what's interesting about Forza Horizon 5 is that it is getting 10 out of 10 reviews across the board. Hmm. Since the first Horizon game released. The first Horizon game, it released like 8. Okay. Second. 9. Third. Like a 9.5. Hmm. IGN gave... Four, a nine point six, and everybody's been giving five a ten out of ten, saying it's one of the best reviewed, or it's the best reviewed racing game in like fifteen years. Huh. It's got a ninety one percent on Metacritic, which puts it in the top one hundred games ever made. That's interesting. I know. I mean, well, it's like, cause how do I say this? The like, argument keeps coming up. It's just a racing game. It's not narrative driven. There's what's the impact of it? I wager you this. It's just a good time. 
and it's phenomenal at everything it does, and it, it's graphically stunning. Just watching it even on this Mac. Yeah, I it, mean, I, I definitely agree with you there. I, I just, I, I do wonder, like, are those awards more given out for, like, the overall... What's like, for, I don't know. It's like, yeah, I guess it just depends on what the, like, the, the, the award so the in particular is So the criteria for, yeah. usually, at least I'll use, um... If it's for, like, story building and stuff like that, these probably aren't the greatest examples. Well, I know. Games, it's like, but, it's like yeah. you have, like, in our example, GTA Five got a 10 out of 10. You had story, you had mechanics. It's like... Yeah. This isn't really being defined by the story in place. There's, like, something there. Well, and, that, and that's what I mean. It's, it's like, not, it's like uh, as long as that's not really, like, it's the not, defining it's not the criteria of why this is, is awarded things, yeah. it's like, you know, that makes sense. It's, it's, so what's interesting is you have, like, every year there's, like, a big game that's nominated for Game of the Year but gets snubbed. Mm -hmm. Despite its, like, great influence. Last year was Animal Crossing New Horizons. Okay. There's no game, like, that gets... Like, like Animal Crossing, there's no story to that. You're in debt, you like build it. a house, you <laughs> fix the fucking island. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's it. The um, But it was a blast, and it came to define last year. Yeah, totally. I mean, I like, be, Animal Crossing was fucking huge. Yeah. I will be is, fucking so. livid if Forza doesn't get a Game of the Year nomination. Because, as an example, like, IGN, who gave it a 10 out of 10, mm -hmm. this is the first 10 out of 10 this year. Interesting. Yeah. Which is crazy to think. And it's like, I was one of those guys that like, it's just a racing game. It doesn't matter. So this well, sequence, uh, uh, drum and bass song go really well with racing. Well, and that's what I mean, where it's like, if we're looking at the merits of like an entertaining game and like graphics and, yeah. you know, sound and like other qualities, you know, it's, it's yeah. yeah. It, 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 like, this game is definitely in a league of its fucking own. I know. It, it's, it, at least by the look of it, you know. It's like you and, have... um. And it's so cool. There's like little attention to detail. Like um, there are little like huts you can find in the wilderness with like old decrepit cars to restore. Hmm. There's multiple radio stations you can listen to. Each is hosted by the actual musician that's featured on it. That's interesting. And it's like it's little stuff like that. There's 550 cars. Yeah. It's it's just a such a wide variety of things. It's all done well. Yeah. Well, it sounds like it's much. It's a much bigger built out world, exactly. obviously than you know you've ever had really before yeah and like that's a that's it's a milestone i mean exactly it's think an it, accomplishment it, it should be some like theoretically this this is the type of game that will like push that boundary of racing games now you exactly. know where it's it like should. this will help define what this a racing is, game can this be the this could just push the, it could like visually look at this it's it's an attempt at something totally new that could help just like push the entire medium forward yeah like it i mean also this is just sweet racing the fucking plane down the stretch to get to the end of the get to the end of the event. Yeah, well, that's legit. Fucking great. It's like it's it's and having played it now, I may put like ten hours in the Forza. And nice. it's it's some of the most fun I've had all year playing a game. Mm. And usually I'm one of those guys, I love racing games. Forza Horizon proved itself to me a long time ago to be like worth my time. Yeah. But I'm one of those guys that plays it for like 20 hours get through the main whatever events and then just sort of drop it in favor of something else mm. this game released <laughs> three days ago for me <laughs> like i don't play racing games that much it's like i did when i was a kid but that's the only thing i had it was that or pokemon and it's yeah. like and but now we're ha like having something like this it immediately grabbed my attention it's just so much better produced mm. than a lot of the games i played recently it's immediately refined like, so many games and sort of the live service model, like I talked about a couple weeks ago, like with Avengers, mm -hmm. is prone to it where they release something that's unfinished. And it's sort of like almost everybody's come to the expectation that that's just how the industry works now. <laughs> yeah. This and is... then you get a ridiculously polished product like this that is so good and fire, like, car pun intended, firing on all cylinders from the get go. Yeah. And it's so fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, it, and it shows you exactly. It shows you as a consumer what like, you're kind of missing out on yeah. in terms of like, well, I could be presented with these finished products yeah. that I don't have to worry about, like you know, I mean, these like awful lags so and hangups and like weird things. Usually, the Forza the release calendar, you have a Horizon game, you have a mainline Forza game. Horizon, normal Forza. Gotcha. Um, normal Forza has taken a few years off. Uh, it's been three years since the last Horizon game. Hmm. And no one fucking complained. Because yeah. they're like, this is going to be good. Like, it's putting time into something that actually matters, putting care into something. And, like, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Fable. 
Oh yeah, totally. But this developer is doing a new Fable game. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Fable was fucking, Fable was, Fable was like the Xbox exclusive. It was, I mean, it was such a huge deal, dude. Like it was like one of those, like it was a fucking choose your own adventure game where you were just like, dude, I could go around fucking people up or I can go around helping everybody out and completely do play different stories. So yeah, Playground Games, the developers of Forza Horizon are making a Fable game due sometime in the next two years. Interesting. So it's like, it's stuff like that. They're, it's a developer that's doing good work and is pushing the medium and is starting to branch out from the genre that they started with. Mm-hmm. Hopefully it's for the best. Hopefully we can set out a new standard. Hopefully. It'll be a real shame, though, if this just gets the fucking... It's a racing game and gets a blown off thing. Yeah. Because I, then everybody's worse for it. Yeah. Like, if you don't pay attention to it, then you're just going to kind of miss... You're going to, like, miss out on... on... You're going to miss the boat. Well, yeah. And, like, a lot of potential... That I think, you know, that brings to the table in terms of, like, what it's doing graphically and what it's doing um, mechanically, yeah. you know. Hey, uh, oh, actually, I mentioned Avengers a moment ago. Okay, uh, dude. Last time we uh, mentioned that they'd added in the XP booster. Oh, yeah, yeah. After the shitstorm they, re- they got for it, they added the XP booster to everybody else's account and gave everybody uh, credit who had bought it. Oh, my God. They didn't refund them. They gave them credit, and they issued a formal apology. This is so fucking wild. They just need to shut that shit down. They need to. Like, it's, like even the company, I think there was a quote from like, uh, you know, one of the higher ups of the, the company that made it. And they were like, they like said in, I, I mean, I don't have the, I can't remember the direct quote, but they basically were paraphrasing, just said that like the game was a failure Yeah. and it, we know it's a failure. Yeah. And we're just trying like, to milk it for everything. They, it's yeah. And so it's like, it's as if you're playing that game right now, I don't know why the fuck you're playing it. <laughs> But, like, clearly they're just, like, as a company, they're just, like you just said, they're just milking consumers for well, what they can before they get rid of it. You know what's interesting? They stop updating or whatever. Guardians the, the Gal- Square Enix's Guardians of the Galaxy just released. Oh, yeah. And it's fully single player. It's not live service. You finish the story, you're done. Mm. The replayability is going back and finding collectibles in the missions. Interesting. It is okay. released so, to wide praise. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I just don't think... I don't know. I mean, it's, you know, and something that leads us to like a different, you know, a, a different conversation too, but it's, it's interesting that, you know, you put out these two kind of different products like that yeah, with, you know, similar types of, uh, character or potential action. And, well, yeah. and, you know, you see like doing two different types of like programming. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting just to see like what might do better business wise. Yeah. Know, I mean, I sales think, wise and like what could be better, like received. I think we're in the midst of a transition back to, um, or at least a transition to balance when it comes to like story based single player experiences mm-hmm. that are one run through and you're done with it. Or at least most players are going to be like that. Or along with the mul- massively multiplayer universes or like multiplayer games, during the last console generation, there was a huge emphasis on, like, fuck single player. Okay, like, I, I yeah, want to yeah. say, like, um, EA, like, some executive at EA was like, single player is not the future. We make more money and players stay more engaged with multiplayer. Hmm. But that came and bit them in the ass because the yeah. single player games are, like, the fucking blockbuster movies. Yeah, People yeah. play through them once, but they pay 60 bucks for it. It doesn't matter how long they're spending in it. Yeah. No, that's a good point, though. It's like, people are more than happy to pay for them, you know? And yeah. I mean, yeah, that's interesting. I, I just I wonder if there will be a kind of a you know slow reversal into like some like you know like you I think said, or at least a, single or player, at least a balance where they like you can dip your your feet into both. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, because there are merits to both, and there are Absolutely. really enjoyable thing aspects to both types guy. of gameplay. You're a PlayStation guy, uh, Spider Man, yeah, God of War, yeah, iconic games, Horizon Zero Dawn, all single player games mm-hmm. on the PlayStation console that have no element beyond you exploring by yourself and uncovering a story. Yeah. That's it. Um, I might be a big destiny fan, but it struggles at times because it's trying to stick to that massive multiplayer open world type deal. Okay. And it, there are hitches that come with that. It can be done. Well, it can be done terribly. Why is wow still running? Right. (laughs) They did it well. Yeah. So, um, wow. Wow. So yeah, I think it's fascinating. And mm. actually, on I was going to transition when it comes to reviews and Forza and all that. Uh, I want to briefly talk about Eternals. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, okay, so... I watched it. Uh, you haven't yet. You are in no rush to watch it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, uh, you know, it's I'm not, I'm not hating on the movie. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm, yeah, I'll, I'll watch it. 
casually when it comes like if that would have been that would have been a, for me a great movie for them to give you the option to either stream or you know Which i probably is... would i probably no i maybe not i probably wouldn't have bought it on access <laughs> you but... know it was one of those um it's one of those things where i i mean i'm intrigued to see how the numbers turn out this weekend we're gonna get them tomorrow we're recording this sunday night oh i mean i i think i saw some actually really it was like i mean it had like i think eternals had the fourth biggest box office opening since the pandemic, that doesn't surprise me. It's, it's behind like something Sh- like behind 70, seventy-one million or something like okay. that. Okay, Shang Chi I think did like ninety, but the hype was a lot more for Shang Chi over Eternals. Well, because I mean they've been trying. I mean, it seems like it feels like they've been hyping Eternals longer than they did well, Shang Chi, and, and that's we, because and then, and then, and I think that's what that that's why like I think that hype kind of burnt out by yeah. the time the movie finally came around. Well, yeah, and I think it's a less. I, we were talking about this while we were having dinner. Um, there's a it's a less engaging subject. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so neat. It gets a bit niche and it's a, there's a lot thrown at you. It's completely different. You have the challenge of it being in an ensemble and you have the challenge of every single character, not really being a, a approachable every man like Shang-Chi is at least at the beginning, you know? And yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, if you have a, if you have a, a roster of characters, one, people outside of like deep cut Marvel fans are going to recognize. Yeah. It's hard to sell them on those characters to begin with yeah. I mean, Shang as Shang well as like, well. Uh, yeah, he's, he's niche, but, but I feel like the promotional material is a lot stronger for that movie. Niche, but not nearly as niche as the Eternals. Like yeah. even Shang-Chi is part of like Avengers and X-Men crossovers in the comic books yeah. and stuff like that. You know what I mean? In humans and in, in humans give Eternals a run for their money. Yeah. Dude. I mean, honestly, the Inhumans would have been way more interesting. So, but, but, but here, the thing is, um, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I like I said, I'm here, not, I'm not here to hate on the movie. I'm just, uh, I'm interested to see what your thoughts are. Though. So here's my thing with Eternals is that for every, it's, it's a sort of like a two steps forward, one step back. Every single turn in that movie, there's enough content, enough ideas for if they really were to expand on it, mm-hmm. they could probably make two movies with what happened in that movie. I mean, as shown, it is literally ten minutes shorter than Avengers Endgame. Which is it's asking, a long fucking which is movie. asking a lot from from that from said, an unknown. You know what I mean? That said, it is it doesn't slump. It holds its momentum pretty well. Like yeah, you're you're yeah. brought from set piece to set piece to set piece in a pretty smooth manner. It didn't feel like two out two and a half hours. Okay. Not like Shang Chi where where it was like two fifteen and the second act like killed the momentum of the movie. Yeah, it kind of dropped. It oh. just it dropped out. <laughs> the floor fell out from that movie. I enjoyed. I think Shang Chi is a better movie. Shang Chi, uh, the, the I guarantee you the rewatchability of that movie. It, yeah, is going to be incredibly high. It's like, gonna be I'm, incredibly I'm high. looking forward to like the next time I look I watch it. One hundred percent. I am. I am too. I, I think. I think Shang Chi was a blast. It was a fucking fun movie. Eternals like, is better than Black Widow. Oh, but not yeah, as good okay. as Shang Chi. Um, and I think the characters are over, overall pretty likable. Mm-hmm. Actors doing a good job. Uh, direction's great. Chloe Zhao is an incredible director. That was the big selling point of the movie, it seems. And yeah, I mean, I think the company knew that too. I think some of the um, some of the, I have I have no issues with like the the gender or the race swapping of characters. It doesn't fucking matter to me, especially with characters this niche. Well, and it, yeah, again, these yeah, exactly like you just said, these characters are so unknown that it's like. If anybody's gonna pick bones about that, then they must be like die-hard Eternals fans, and it's like you're <laughs> fucking lame anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! It's like, oh my god, they made they, they changed Kingo's race from, I'll, to another minority. I would oh, no. I would love to meet the person that has like uh, like access to all the superheroes out there, and they're like <laughs> the Eternals are my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> like, Fuck Batman! Slap a fool. Um, <laughs> the the. Uh, no, but I found all the actors, portrayals of the characters very likable. Don Lee especially is fucking great as Gilgamesh. Oh, yeah. I really enjoyed him. Um, he has some very good comedic moments and is just generally charming. Um, yeah. everybody, everybody does a good job. I've, it's sort of failed by the writing. And uh, mm. we looked this up at dinner. Chloe Zhao co-wrote it. And it feeds into my thesis that directors should direct and writers should be left to write. Yeah. Very few times does that work, in my opinion. Yeah, one I, Cohen brother directs, the other Cohen brother writes. I think it's good to focus your energies. You know, I think yeah. I think with like that kind of shit, you're you're asking for like a director yeah. 
to like really pull themselves in a in a to a you know not in a direction I guess that <laughs> good, they uh, that they might you know it might be like not their like their forte you know it might not yeah. be their comfort zone but it's like sure they can write yeah. like anybody can fucking write yeah. like a scene it's it, they, you, it's whether you can write a good scene and like yeah. sometimes director just has the vision they don't necessarily how to know how to like fucking throw it down yeah do know? the dialogue and especially I mean, like, with dialogue and character these building. are good actors as well the actors did good. They, with what they were given, mm-hmm. did a good job. Fair and, you enough. know, and it does lean. It's not as, like, sappy as Shang-Chi was at sometimes. Less of a popcorn movie. <clears throat> it's a lot more character-driven. And I, f- I mean, I, I'm, or at least character drama-driven. Mm-hmm. And I think, like, there's some twists and turns to the movie that I did really enjoy. But I just feel like it could have been split into two films. Hmm. With, like, a sick... Like, there is a built-in cliffhanger halfway, like, or at the end of the second act of this film mm-hmm. that could have set up an awesome sequel, but Fair they enough. just turned it into a, a third act. And, like, the third act wasn't, like, annoyingly long like Marvel third acts can be, but I feel like there was time, like, Crow, who's the the fucking deviant villain, mm-hmm. has, like, a minute and a half of screen time. That's so interesting. It's And it's, like, but, and then they're sort of bouncing between that and the Celestials and while I don't feel like it was badly paced, there are so many ideas at play mm-hmm. that it would have been a more approachable film if they'd split up into multiple. Okay. As well as sort of really driving home specifically one of the twists. So, and, like, did this movie do a good job expanding the scope of the Marvel Universe? Yes, it did. And I that's actually one of the things I like the most about it is uh, it sort of – it gives you a different sort of like look at the universe, which is interesting. Yeah. And um, I, I think it sets up some interesting things to come, like Black Knight. You get some celestial stuff. Mm. Uh, so as everybody I, has yeah, heard, I, I Harry guess, Styles is in it playing fucking Star Fox. <laughs> I guess that's it. Like uh, much to my surprise, Pan Oswald's playing fucking Pip the Pip the troll. Pip the troll. That's what I was looking for. Pip the troll. You better have, you better have a cigar in every fucking scene. Which I just got through it out there. Pan Oswald. Um, number one. Uh, He's played more Marvel actors than anyone. All all five Koenigs and uh, rumor has and Modok. I was gonna say, unfortunately, they didn't cast uh, Oswald as Modok in the MCU. Yeah. Rumor has it that they cast Jim Carrey as Modok. interesting, right? Yeah. I saw that. Which I'm, I mean, honestly, I love Jim Carrey. Would have preferred Patton Oswald. Yeah, me too. But that's I'm just glad that they've included him in something because that dude is such a huge fucking geek. Yeah, that it would be such a shame to not find a place for him in the MCU. He loved playing like Eggman in Sonic. So I mean, give it to him, dude. right? Just give it to him, yeah. What's Eggman except for Modok not in a weird suit? Well, yeah, I think that's what got Jim Carrey the part for sure. Like, <laughs> is he probably like they're probably like, hey man, you did pretty good with this weird fucking goon. Like, why don't you? Nobody just thought Sonic do, would work. Do the same thing with this one. <laughs> you guys got, you guys got a fucking Idris Elba for Sonic too. I like I like this random quote that I read that was like Idris Elba was like oh I don't want to make knuckles yeah I'm not trying to make knuckles sexy but it's like fuck you dude it's gonna happen it's gonna happen it's oh it's already (laughs) happened somebody somebody some some... mom somewhere is like I cannot wait for that movie to come out (laughs) (laughs) Uh, yeah but uh, I yourself was sexiness aside. Um, <laughs> they killed Heimdall too soon. Uh, the uh... <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, that's that was one of the things I was most concerned about with the movie was like, was whether the scope was going to be achieved as well as um, yeah, I, I you know, I think I really, I I was really wondering if it's going to be like you know a one time use of the Celestials, for instance. Definitely not. And that's that is like a cool aspect to me yeah. because that the 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 cosmic aspect of that this movie was potentially bringing was like the most appealing thing to yeah. me. Like I don't care about Icarus. I don't care about Selma Hayek's character. I don't care about any of them, but I'm interested in why the fuck the Celestials are around. You know what you I know, mean? I think by the end of the movie, you will care about some of those characters. Maybe. Um, I do think some are, some are stronger than others. Um, definitely highlight for me. I said, I really liked Gilgamesh because he's a fucking teddy bear. Makari is brutally underused, but her scenes are an absolute blast to watch because they nail super speed. Nice. No, yeah. And I was telling Man of Steel Super Speed, where you're watching help, where like the grunts are getting laid out helplessly just, because they can't do anything. Yeah. And you're seeing it from their perspective. And it's like, it's really fun to watch it like that. Also, they do a very cool effect where they um, sort of canonize her being deaf mm-hmm. by whatever she hits something in Super Speed, it creates a sonic boom. Oh, interesting. So, like, it, it's, it's fun to like have a, like, a, a deaf actor. 
mm-hmm. on like at performing, and she's not bad. Like she's enjoyable to watch. She's actually pretty funny, and she has an incredible phys- physical performance. Yeah, but I mean, I'll say this: inclusion, not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. But it's it, it makes you wonder, like, w- like where did that idea come from? I don't you know. know what I mean, where that spark come from? I don't know. But it seems like they they underuse her. But it was a spirited idea, you know. Mm. I can definitely whoever came up with it is fucking clever. Yeah. I just wish they got to use it a bit more. Well, because it's like it's not like a what's that John Krasinski movie? A Quiet Place. It's not like a Quiet Place where it's actually like a uh, almost like a, a interesting plot element, like yeah. because of like what's going on in the it's world. More of, it's more of a fun character. It's element. More of like a yeah. Yeah, it's like I don't know. I mean, that that was one of the main focuses of the whole thing was was you know creating a. a certain type of diversity amongst the ensemble yeah, cast. And which, I think, I think they, and it looks like they've achieved it really well and to success. You so. know what, you know what real di- diversity is? No, you don't fucking notice it while you're watching the movie. Yeah. And it that's why, matter. and that's why, that's why, when, <laughs> and that, it's, mean, it's, yeah. And that's why when we're like watching things from like companies as big as Marvel nowadays, yeah. you're, you're like, on one hand, it's sort of ham fisted because you, you know, they're doing it for the demographic of yeah. it and on the, and not for like the, the representation of it. And so, it kind of puts this like sour taste in your yeah. mouth unless it's pulled off really well. You know, I wrote a paper about this recently. I was telling you about this. I'm in a class that's literally about like uh, media ownership mm-hmm. and the me- the ideas behind like uh, what what is produced, why it's produced, that type of stuff. Yeah. I wrote a paper about ba- about Black Panther, and it was about how like the and like uh, my general thesis was that it's like inclusion and equity is important in large companies. And even if it comes from a jaded, cynical perspective that we can make money from this, mm. you're enabling people to tell their own stories. And I feel like I feel like Black Panther is a good example of that. Where yes, some Disney exec in a fucking boardroom was like, "There are more people that are okay with uh, uh, inclusion and having a uh, black-led film." I, I suppose it's, it's more of like the exploitation of exactly, that, you know exactly. what I mean, and that's and that's where that's where it becomes more of like a sinisterly motivated thing rather exactly. than rather than like a, a well intentioned motivated yeah. thing. It's exploiting it for you money, know? but and then so as like as like yeah, as as inclusive culture grows and rises, and as particularly in the, in the U.S., uh, you see that that kind of appeal coming yeah. more and more from the entertainment that's produced. Yeah, and it's not a bad thing by any it's, means. It's it's just it's, it's just you have to know that it's pandering. Exactly, and it that is, and that's something as a pandering. consumer you need to go into wisely. I think. Yeah. So when you see a cast stuffed full of like you know uh, a lot of diverse characters, you have to like you have to look you at it not not for like not for like I enjoy this exclusively for the diversity, but is it a good piece of work? You know what I mean? And hopefully it's both. Yeah, and I, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like right. ideally it's both. But you have to, you have, you know, you, it's like yeah. you have to gauge nowadays and, whether things are like are like pandering to you or yeah. like truly like this way because there was, it's meant to be like a success. In that this was form. sort of like my ending thesis for the paper was mm-hmm. like, no matter what, Black Panther became a cultural touchstone for the 2010s, and yeah. it made a fuck ton of money for Disney. So they're gonna keep doing this. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I mean, look at look at like they're making a Black Panther two. Yeah. Without the lead, the lead star. With like a person who's kind of like a quasi COVID denier. What? Letitia Who? Wright. No. <laughs> like, oh, so like no. you know, like but they're but they're but they're gonna pursue it, right? Because they know the demographics there and it was yeah. a success last time. Son of a so, bitch. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's like you know ah. you, you just I don't know, it's I, I mean I am not calling her a full, a COVID denier. I'm guess I'm guess I'm call, like I've just read that she's been how do I say it? Uh more loosey goosey about like you yeah. know following certain protocols and actually like believing in certain things. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Um, okay, well, but, so you know, back to I mean, turtles for a moment, for for one moment longer. But like my my interesting thing is uh, so like I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing, I suppose, where this storyline intersects with other storylines in the future. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not that like potentially these characters will even cross, but like. How will the eternal story, like, or how does the eternal story fit into the uh, other happenings in the MCU? You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's just like a really interesting aspect to like this mo- potential movie franchise. Yeah. Where it's like, you know, I- either way, there's you know, there's stuff going on, but like these characters are kind of doing something on a different scale. Yeah. 
you know, uh, uh, dare I say, a cosmic scale. Oh. You know, um, while like, you know, you could be following Sam Wilson and Bucky, uh, you know, on a different adventure. And you're just like in the back of your mind being like, I wonder if they fucking had to like, you know, deal with another celestial anytime soon yeah. or like you know like dude and like, yeah, things like that it's like i mean so, and that's kind of one of the fun things about the gigantic world that 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 marvel is has at the moment you know yeah. where it's it, it, there's always that room to play yeah. now and so you know you can say and that and that's that's where i think the gamble of doing something with a cast of like the eternals where it's like unknown fairly unknown characters yeah and, uh, it, yeah, it works because you have, you know, that other lean to where you can say like, well, you know, this is this is happening in the same universe as all these other things. So, you know, it gives more life to, immediately to the movie itself. And, you know, also one fun thing with relative unknown comic characters is that you have a lot more creative liberties and you can sort of I to mean, a point like like you said, it's only the really, really, really devoted audiences that are going to be like, this isn't my version of Icarus. Like, well, yeah, I mean, you can. You can it, I you mean, can it's, it's interesting because you, you, you can have, get away with more with iteration, I guess. Yeah, I mean, but then uh, you know, then it, it risks. I mean, that's always a dangerous thing because it's like you and you know, you, you know, this. It's like you have to walk a fine line where it's like you make the character the best version of the character that people are familiar with, but you have to keep it in the context of like what you're fucking doing, like like a a, a comic book Superman wouldn't work in. A movie i don't think i really just don't think it would because you've they've built him to be such an impervious key element to the universe itself yeah and so it just creates this like larger than fucking possible character so if you do like you were saying if you do some like low-key characters you can bring like some fresh take to it yeah but at the same time like i don't know it's hard to shake it up completely which which is always danger but i don't know i mean like I said, I'm looking forward to watching well, it when it when it shows up in my house. But uh, the Eternals, I think, I think uh, it's it's fi- been well received so far. Like I yeah. think, I think, I, I think audience score on Rotten Tomatoes is like 86, 50 50 critically, which I think is incredibly fair. Um, it's one of those movies that like if you're not in a rush to see it, there's not really a rush to see it. Uh, yeah. Feel it out yourself. It's um, like Black Widow that way. If you're gonna have, yeah, <laughs> yeah, actually, that's a pretty that's a pretty apt comparison. I feel like if uh, feel free to listen to other people's opinions, but when it comes around to you watching it, make your own. Oh yeah, well for sure. I, I think it's I think it's important to like note that you know, you're... like like other movies and like other things that have happened recently, people are starting to use the internet against everything. Where it's like, you know, oh, yeah, it got Rotten bombed. Tomato got review it got review bombed, and just like Snyder Cut did when it got dropped, like you know. Ma- like Whatever. you just said, my friend, make 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 up your own fucking mind about things. Yeah. You know, it's good to like gauge, but don't live and die by Rotten Tomatoes. You know, yeah. don't live and die by a fucking reviewer score. Like, don't. I mean, yeah. Just it's, if it's you're a, interested at all, make just sure check you, it out. Make sure you invest yourself in that. So. So um, so before we wrap up, because um, Kate's almost here. Um, oh, before you before we wrap up, <laughs> shout out, to- yeah, uh, shout out to Kate. Uh, <laughs> thanks for bringing me up, babe. Uh, <laughs> So um, let's watch uh, the new teaser. For yeah, Stranger Things dude, 4. you told me that Stranger Things Four dropped a, a, a fucking trailer, and it looks like it's titled "Welcome to California." Yeah, it's to my knowledge, it looked like from the little I saw a little sizzle of it. Um, it looks like this is where uh, Joyce moved to. Oh, dude, I was just I was just wondering that. I was just like, let's this see. has got to be where they head. Here we man. go. Boy, I'm excited. I'm so fucking excited. This eleven talking? Yeah, dude, is that fucking? That's Will. Dude, Will looks grown the fuck up, man. Is that I boy, mean, a teenager. Oh my god, dude. Getting into like I'm a late, late eighties now. I'm already sold on this environment that they've created. Jesus Christ. It's stuck up kids. Okay. Yeah, dude. Spring break. What a dick. Dude, spitballs fucking blow. We will have the best spring break ever. What the fuck? Dude. 
there is some fucking fuck? action <laughs> happening somewhere in this goddamn Guns season. Guns blazing. Straight up, man. And you know what? Like, I mean, that, and that brings me like that reminded me of a completely other side of '80s uh, movies and kind of like entertainment culture. Was that like you know huge action movies and shit in the '80s that yeah. came out? And some of those like shots that you see really briefly in that car ch- cars being chased with like a yeah. helicopter behind it and an explosion going off. It's like was this a fucking Rambo movie? I know. Like- <laughs> I mean, you see that, like, going up the stairs, and there's just an arm with a gun out. Dude, that's wild, man. Windows and breaking. There's, like, a random door in a desert. Like, <laughs> oh, bunkers? <laughs> like, what is... Like, so it's like, I mean, God, dude. So there's more government shit going on. Fucking crazy, man. Oh, my God, dude. And, like, okay, and this somehow is connected to... The last time we talked about Stranger Things, it's connected to whatever storyline with the haunted house is going on. And you have Hopper in Russia. Oh my fuck, dude! Where is this going? <laughs> so I'm st- so hype on this, man! I cannot wait for Stranger Things season four. Slightly painful though to see. My goodness, Will looking like such an adult, dude. They all like, like I mean, <laughs> clearly they've had the like, you know, you can't, you can't you stop puberty it. happening with those kids, but like, shit, they definitely have started sprouting. You like, it's crazy for sure. <laughs> How the fuck is this gonna happen? I have no idea, man. That, that I don't know. Is... It's like, it looks, from what we've, we've been shown, it's going in so many different directions. Yeah, that's what it feels like. And and, and as you've noted, like, they, this is definitively heading towards, like, a conclusion. Not in yes. this season. So but I think in, like, that's a, what David Harbour said in the interview. In a fifth he said season? That, yeah, he said that this is sending the series towards a definitive end point. And that, like, you know, is, I think it's it's such a smart move with a like a a really like from beginning to now beloved fucking series yeah you know what i mean um that it's like yeah it, it's to 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 try to drag this out would be a huge mistake to give these characters and the 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 crew and the the, the writers and the directors like the the fucking like so we got, dignity we get, of, uh, of like ending it on a good note, you know, and yeah. not just trying to like beat it to death. So we got a, uh, we got episode titles by the way as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I look, uh, I got them right here. Oh, nice. Nice. Episode one, the hellfire club, obviously an X-Men reference. Yeah. Super excited to see what that's about because I wonder if that's going to introduce either some sort of like <clears throat> other council of like potentially powered people. Who knows? Or maybe like one white fucking queen. Maybe they're gonna introduce like a really powerful An telepath. Emma Frost type? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Like, yeah, I don't know, man. Mm. Um, Ve- Vecna's curse. Interesting. What's episode that's two. A reference to? Episode three: the monster and the superhero. Okay. I'm assuming that's not a reference. Just episode. monster and the superhero. I wonder if that's like a, some sort of like reference to um, Eleven's character. You know, because she's Probably. off and on kind of been like the super powered, you know, hero yeah, of the story. Uh, for Dear Billy. Obviously, they're bringing Billy back. I don't think so, dude. I think he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's fucked. No, the boy's gone. He, he is. He is dead. Billy. Two, saw, Billy we, two point We saw the body. <laughs> we saw. Yeah, for sure. Um. Uh. Number number five, the Nina Project. The Nina Project. Six, the dive. Jeez. Okay. Seven or or. What oh. the fuck am I reading here? The massacre at Hawkins Lab. The fuck does that allude to? Uh, maybe it was the um, when all the maybe it, it might be in reference to when all the dogs broke into the lab. Oh yeah, I mean maybe because everyone died. That. Yeah, dude, <laughs> fucking hell, dude. <laughs> what was it? Um, uh, Samwise is coming back. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, uh, penultimate ep- episode, Papa. Ooh, oh he's not God. dead. <laughs> Definitely not. We didn't see that body. No, dude. I you've I've been wondering about that character that like he since... said after the first season that he is not dead. He's gonna be back. He's, oh my God. Which dude. I thought for a while that might just be alluding to um, his appearance as like a vision in season two. Yeah. But I feel like I mean there's got to be some strings being pulled. Who knows? Um, and then uh, the final episode, the piggyback. Which who the fuck knows the what that piggyback, means? Piggyback, man. So yeah, like, this is so many different directions. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm I mean, just, I'm very curious as to like what exactly is going to happen and how they're going to tie this all together. Yeah, because oh, you have yeah. Hopper and Russia. They're like half a world apart at this point. You have Hopper and Russia. You got Eleven and Will doing something in California. Yeah, and then you have fucking um, the rest of them back still in Hawkins. Yeah, back, back in Hawkins. Yeah, and um, on the other side of the country, it's like how are these going to come together? Yeah, or are they really going to do a season? 
of like independent stuff and bring it home for like season five. That would be interesting. I would I would kind of be interested in that where they like they find a creative way to take you know, Hopper the story, Infinity Eleven War. story, <laughs> yeah, and they all just basically like they 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 give them a pathway to meet, and then f- season five is when the stories intersect. You yeah. know what I mean? Like start that, pu- start really putting the pieces together and bringing it home. I wouldn't be opposed to that necessarily. I mean, I don't need the full crew together. Oh, you know, like, um, yeah, I know. I just, I just this is something I thought. Oh, it was not related to Stranger Things. It just, I just thought of something. <laughs> Speaking of bringing something home, um, finish Stranger Things. I'm super oh, yeah. excited. We still really don't know what the fuck is due to happen in the show. No. So, last thing, hmm. Daniel Day Kim is playing Fire Lord Ozai in the live action. Dude, Avatar I saw that. Oh Ex- my excellent. god. <laughs> Excellent casting, dude. Oh fucking hell, dude! I'm I'm, the... I'm I'm excited just on the casting alone for that show. I'm uh, excited. The kids look on the money, dude. They're like slightly older than in the show, but that's, that's not fine. a problem. That's fine. You know, um, you don't necessarily want to see a 12 year old kid doing all those action yeah. scenes. <laughs> I mean, like if if you get the kid, say uh, Ang's like Ang's 12, right? Mm-hmm. You make Ang 14, Sock sure. and Katara yeah. 16. Yeah, and that's fine. The difference is like uh, it was of my childhood. Uh, Percy Jackson, the Olympians. There was okay, a movie. yeah. yeah. Um, the kids in the book are like ten and eleven. Oh yeah. And they age them up to like seventeen and eighteen for the movie. Yeah. But they left these like late teenagers doing the same dumb shit as like the kids, and like making the same mistakes. That's not believable. Yeah, not so much. Believable. You bump them up <laughs> two years in between there. Yeah. That's fine by me. Well, and I mean, especially with like the you know the last airbender type stuff like it's it's pretty easy to believe that like i mean like how do i say it? it's uh it's kind of a stretch to believe that a 12 year old could pull off some of the things that Aang can do yeah and you eventually set that aside completely yeah. you don't even think of the, their ages like no nope. in that show and so it's completely acceptable to be like all right whatever we're just gonna age these kids up a, a couple of years yeah it may that way in your, in your mind actors. as a viewer you're like okay yeah what for sure yeah but it's also like you know as a viewer you're you're not necessarily concerned with a child in the middle of all these fight <laughs> scenes like you uh, know oh dude that reminds me of kick ass almost or or logan dude like like when oh, yeah, when right. with the girl that played X twenty three like her fucking stunt work and her choreography was so awesome. It was, great. but it was also like super disarming at times. You're just like, this is a fucking child, right? Like, <laughs> She's a cold blooded killer. Yeah, dude. You're just like, what? Like, I mean, as a kid, it must have been really fucking fun to like yeah. learn some of that shit, dude. Oh, <laughs> she's been talking about wanting to come back. That would be awesome. I would love. I would love that. Like, with that casting would continue. You know? She was great. She was. I mean, a perfectly perfectly fine X twenty three. It was great. The, the sequences were great. I mean, it's it's just it's about like honestly not connecting her necessarily it, as that yeah. character, but just like starting a different version yeah. with that actress. I think. I don't think I don't think she'll be back. Oh, I don't oh, think so either. On the mic, it appears Kate is here. And there it is, friends. Thanks, guys. Episode eighty-six. It is over. 